Hello and welcome to another episode of Box Trek. I'm your host, Matt Brady, joined again once by uh, Derek Buck, uh, Death by Derek on Twitter. Derek, how are we doing today? I am miserable. I wish I were dead and I'm ready to talk about video games. <laughs> hey, man. Well, you know, let's hope let's hope uh, talking some video games uh, cheers you up, man. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what that does. Okay. All I've right. Tried, I've tried um, <laughs> chocolate covered pretzels. That hasn't done much. Um, so yeah, that really all I have left at this point is let's talk about video games. Let's see where that goes. Hey man. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk some <laughs> games. Uh, we're going to be doing, um, 10, we're going to do 10 eShop recommendations. I've got five, Derek's got five and, uh, just kind of talk about some games. Uh, maybe perhaps, uh, somebody's, you know, holiday season's here. So there's gonna be a lot of new switch owners looking to hit up that Nintendo eShop. So, uh, yeah, just go from there. So Derek, I'm going to let you go first. First off, you just said new Switch owners. I'm so jealous of these people who are just discovering the Switch. Oh, I know. And, like, do you remember that feeling when you first got it and how mm-hmm. amazing? Yeah. I'm. Oh God. Did you there get, are people who are did you get, that. Jealous. Did you get yours right at launch? I got mine launch day. Um, and what's weird is I, I was not on board with the Switch. I, I thought, here we go again with Nintendo coming up with a crazy idea that's not going to resonate with people. Uh-huh. But it did. Unlike the Wii U, this one actually resonated. So I was I was happily proven wrong. But I did not. I part of me thought this would be the last Nintendo home console. I, I thought it was going to tank. Oh wow! Um, but I'm I'm really glad that yeah. I was proven wrong. So nice. I love my Switch. So you so day one, uh, Breath of the Wild. I'm guessing right. Yeah. I, so I didn't play it the first day I got it. That's how like kind of meh I was about mm-hmm. the whole thing. Um, but I think like a couple days later, I was like, all right, let's, let's just do this. And I put in breath of the wild and <laughs> oh my God, I, the next several months is right. just a blur. Um, that game kind of took over my life as I imagine it did for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, last week we were talking, I, um, Super Mario Odyssey is when I got mine as, cause I got, mm-hmm. I had a, I was a Wii U guy. I got Wii U at launch. And so I was just like, well, I'll just go ahead and get breath of the wild now. I'll get a switch later. And, uh, so did the Breath of the Wild thing, and then uh, Odyssey was coming out. I was like, "All right, I gotta go switch." And I've loved it. Have loved it since. So, do you you have the gray model, or do you have the red and blue Joy Cons? I have what a friend of mine called the Joyless version, which is the gray one. That's that's what I have as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like uniformity. Like the, mm-hmm. the the red and the blue is really cool looking, but I'm a big fan of like I want everything. So, like for example, when I buy uh, a console that has multi-colored controllers, I only get the controllers that match the console. I'm that anal. Okay. So like, I only have black N64 controllers. I only have silver GameCube controllers because it matches the right. system. I'm very I'm very joyless and authoritarian when it comes to my video games. Hey, you know, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I got the trans what is it, fire orange, I think is what it's called, uh, N64. And so mm-hmm. anytime I anytime I see an N64 controller that's not orange, I'm just like, well that's weird. Like, you know, like it's not <laughs> right. Right, like this isn't this isn't amateur hour. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like it's not going to look right. I don't want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we're gonna do uh, ten, ten uh, e shop uh, recommendations here. So yeah, Derek, I'm gonna let you go first. All right. So, and we should also say we so because a lot of you know first off when you do lists like this, you you just make everyone angry. Mm-hmm. So we should establish up front that we're, we're doing games that ha- do not have a physical release, yes? Yep. So if they have a physical release, they're just qualified from this list. This is purely digital games. Okay, yeah. All right. So my first one um, was, I, I think it was a launch title. Um, either way, it was, it was the first eShop game that I got. Um, Fast RMX. Mm-hmm. So um, this comes from... The same. T- this is a sequel. This is the second game in this se- fast racing series. The first one was on Wii U, um, and it's from what's the name of the developer? They're a really good developer, and they always find a way. What I like about Shinin, Shinin, Shinin yeah. Multi- um, they also did on the Wii U um, this really weird game where you had to. It was like Mario Galaxy, but Mar- Mario Galaxy meets like cellular biology. We're like so instead of planetoids, it mm-hmm. takes place on little cells and little viruses inside the body, 
and you you you're on like a little spaceship that's been injected into the body to kill these viruses. It's so cool. Yeah, nano um, nano assault. Nano, nano assault neo. Yeah. Yeah, the, such a cool game and so these guys always push the tech. They're one of these 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 developers that's really into making visually stunning games. Um, nano assault was like that and Fast RMX right out of the gate on Switch is a very good looking game. Um, so basically what it is, is it's the F-Zero game that Nintendo won't make. Right. Um, so it, it's one of those games that it's not original and it's not trying to be original. Um, this is a game that's filling a, a niche that hasn't been filled on a Nintendo platform since the GameCube, which is super fast F-Zero-like hovercraft racing games, mm. um, which is a very weird genre. Uh, but Fast RMX is that game. If you like F-Zero and you haven't, obviously you're you're missing that in your collection this is an easy recommendation um and the one cool mechanic that's different about it is that you do have to switch fittingly um there are little speed panels on the track that are both blue and orange and you your your ship has this like energy field that you can switch from blue to orange um so when you hit these panels you want to make sure you're the same color so it's kind of like matching the panels as you're going really fast. So it gets to be rhythmic. Um, so yeah, it, it's a little different, but at the same time, it's 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 just F zero, and and that's all it needs to be. Yeah. Have you seen? Uh, gosh, it's a indie title. I think it just came out on Switch like today or something. Uh, Trailblazers. Um, no. Uh, yeah, it's it's a indie game. Um, it's kind of like Splatoon meets F Zero. Um, so it's what? Like, yeah, so it's it's like a two player. So the idea is like you have a teammate and the teammate can lay down, um, like speed boosts, right? Like kind of in Splatoon, right? You oh. lay down, and, yeah, and so but then you hit those boosts like you do in F Zero, and then you get you get to use it. It looks super cool. Um, I haven't had a that chance is- to play it yet, but I saw a trailer for it earlier this year, and I think it just came out on Switch. That's a really interesting twist on the F Zero thing. That's all. That's a that's a very interesting idea. Yeah. So yeah, I think maybe that's uh, you know fast RMX, and that might be options for people who are um, who are uh, F Zero people. So cool. Sure. For yeah. sure. Um, all right. I am uh, my first one. I'm going to go with is Kamiko. Um, Kamiko was a game. It is a launch title. Uh, it was a launch title for the Switch. Um, the cool thing about this game was it was the cheapest Switch eShop title when the Switch launched. It's like $3. Uh, it is not very long, but it is one of those kind of overhead, uh, I would call it like an overhead Zelda type game. You have three characters. They all play slightly different. Um, and you're just kind of going through levels, um, you know, very Zelda type. Uh, one character has a bow and arrow. Another character has a sword. And I'm blanking on what the other character has. I want to say maybe a staff or something like that. But, um, you know, you just kind of have to progress through the level. There's checkpoints. You kill enemies. Um, it's it's not the longest game in the world. But um, given its price point, uh, its cool soundtrack, uh, its kind of overhead Zelda throwback style, uh, I think a lot of people might kind of... Um, like it, especially if you could find it on an eShop sale, you know, sometimes I think I've seen it on eShop sale for like uh, a dollar. So that is definitely also an option if you are into that kind of old school Zelda style. Yeah, I was going to say when we say Zelda style, we mean like the OG original mm-hmm. Zelda. Because this has that top down, um, even pixelated look. Right. Um, that's, that's not even as detailed as A Link to the Past, for example. It's it's mm-hmm. very retro looking. So it's it's gorgeous. But yeah, it's it's very old school Zelda inspired. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, oh, it's a dagger. The other character has a dagger. One character has a large sword. The other character has like a dagger. So I think she's a little bit faster. But uh, yeah, and there's bosses, and you know, there's kind of a puzzle element in in there too. But like I said, it is quite short. Um, but you know, it is also three dollars. So I like. But you know what? I'm, and maybe I'm in the minority here. I kind of dig short games because yeah. let's be honest. How many people? finish all their games like n- nobody finishes all their mm-hmm. games anymore this is like kind of an epidemic in gaming nobody finishes games anymore um so i like the idea of let's just do some short games that are actually a manageable length that people are going to finish and actually experience all the content yeah you know i am uh scared of red dead redemption 2 
I'm just like, I don't think I would ever, ever get close to finishing that game. <laughs> so I'm uh, and like, once in a while having a game of that size is great, but it just feels like there's tons of them. <laughs> and they're like people just have stacks and stacks and i'm guilty of it too that just stacks and stacks of games that not only haven't they finished but in some cases haven't started right yeah so i like short games i'm pro short games yeah so yeah for three bucks there uh there you go so uh all right derek i'm gonna toss it back over to you so this was the second game that i got on the eShop. um it's called mighty gunvolt burst this is in the same way that Fast RMX is F Zero for F for the best F Zero game Nintendo's not making, uh, Mighty Gunvolt Burst is like I know. Well, Mega Man Eleven is out now, but it's the Mega Man game that Capcom for a while wasn't making. This is just old school Mega Man. It, it's Mega Man to a T. Um, you, it's an action platformer shooter type thing. You go through the level, you get to the, the end, the gate slowly opens, you fight a robot boss. Um, it's really awesome. It's difficult. Um, and, but, and what separates it from Mega Man a bit is that it's got some customization. So as you're playing the levels, you can find and collect these hidden items, which allow you to kind of upgrade and, and alter your guns a little bit, your blaster. So you can basically switch your blaster from different types. You can have like a fire blaster, you can have an electricity blaster, and then even further, you can adjust the rate of fire, how many beams it fires. It can bounce if you want, it can go in a wave. So you can really tinker and, and, and change and customize your blasters. And you can also have custom loadouts so that before each level, you can kind of pick one of your custom blasters, which is really cool. So So for people who are into that kind of really digging into the the nuts and bolts of a game and doing customization this one has a lot of it so um mega man with 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 lots to tweak that's mighty gunvolt burst yeah and um this is also in the uh, what is it azure striker gunvolt series um isn't there like a kind yes. of companion yeah game to this as well yeah yeah this is kind of a spin i, I don't want to say spin-off to that series but it's like a combination of uh, the azure gunvolt series which is very similar and um, the Mighty Number no. Nine, so hence Mighty Gunvolt. Right. Um, I know people hear Mighty Number no. Nine and they get terrified, but this is like, this is good. I promise. Yeah. Um, it has the character in it, so you can basically choose between Mighty or um, the Azor Gunvolt character. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I didn't think Mighty Number no. Nine was terrible. Um, <laughs> I know that. Uh, <laughs> I just don't think it was what people wanted or expected yeah. so here's a true story i bought that game because i was super excited for it i have the physical version on on wii u right and i still yeah. haven't played it because i'm scared to because i love mega man so much mm -hmm. <laughs> and now that i've heard all this negative as soon as the negative stuff started coming out i i avoided playing it so i still have it and i, I haven't played it yet i'm kind of afraid to yeah, I, uh, now that well, now that Mega Man uh, eleven it was Mega Man eleven out. Yes, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now that Mega Man eleven is out, and you already have that Mega Man, you know, void kind of filled. I think it would probably be okay to go back and, and see what they were trying, and you won't feel yeah. as disappointed or let down uh, now that we now that we finally have another Mega Man game. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I am going to do. Uh, for my next game, Quest of Dungeons. Uh, Quest of Dungeons is kind of a roguelike uh, indie game. Um, it was released on uh, a lot of things. You can get it on Xbox One, PS4, Swi uh, Switch. Um, I believe it's even also on 3DS, um, Wii U, and of course Steam. Um, yeah, it's a roguelike game, kind of using 16-bit uh, graphics. Uh, but you know, you're, you have a few different characters. You start off with four different characters. You have a uh, warrior, a wizard, an assassin, or a shaman. And you cool. kind of go into these dungeons. And But the cool thing about it is that it is turn-based. Um, and I mean turn-based kind of like a board game. Um, everybody, all the characters, including the enemies, move one uh, at turn at a time. When you're playing it, you don't really realize it until um, you kind of run into enemies. And that they kind of will move in a set 
in like a set kind of pattern or path. And this will help you a lot because as a roguelike, you will die often and have to start over. And so sometimes you can run into situations where you're like, oh, I better fire my arrow and then kind of run away a little bit and see how many spaces I have. Um, also being a roguelike dungeon crawler, you don't know what's in some of the other rooms. So that can kind of cause you to space that out. So there's actually a lot of, um, there's a lot of tactics and strategy involved in this game. Um, and when you hear the term roguelike RPG, that's kind of what you're thinking, but it actually ends up playing more like an action game, uh, based upon the speed at which the game moves. Um, so like, as I said, it's turn-based, but you don't really realize it, but, um, you know, there's, everything is randomly generated. Um, there's obviously loot and things like that and you progress. And I believe there's around nine floors per dungeon, uh, four dungeons total. Um, and you can unlock more characters. You can unlock a, uh, necromancer, uh, for example. Um, but yeah, there's tons of loot. Every time you play it is going to be a totally different experience. I play, I've, uh, played this game probably like 50, I would say 60 runs. Um, and it is a totally different experience every time, but I think it works best on switch being that you can kind of just pick up and go and have short little bursts. And so I think, again, uh, this is something I've found, uh, a lot with the switch is that the switch works so well with indie titles, especially these smaller games as Derek and I were just talking about, uh, nothing wrong with smaller games. I think Smaller games work so well on the Switch because it's just kind of pick up and go. And then if you want to sit down and play it on your screen, you can do that as well. Boy, it really feels, and this is so strange for me as a longtime Nintendo fan, but it really feels like the Switch has become this haven for indie games. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool because Nintendo historically has struggled with third-party support and getting companies to put their games mm -hmm. on the Nintendo platform. But in this new era of digital games and independent developers, for some reason, it's just kind of coalesced around in, uh, around Nintendo. And like you said, I don't know if it's the portability, um, kind of the pick up and play nature of the Switch. I don't know. Part of me feels like games like this fit better on the Switch, which mm -hmm. is kind of the, you know, the Nintendo vibe I'm talking oh, yeah, about. Absolutely. The, you don't want to say cartoony, but colorful, creative. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just fits better on that platform and either way for whatever reason it's been really it's been really fun to watch mm -hmm. yeah you know uh the switch in an odd way is kind of like if you are a steam person like a lot you know a lot of people with these pc gamers have steam libraries of like you know a thousand games like the switch is really kind of your thing because you can now take all of that yeah. stuff on the go you don't have to you know lug around a laptop and a controller uh, to play games. You can just kind of pick up the Switch and go. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Said. Nintendo has been hitting it out of the park with these uh, these Nindies titles, you know, as, as they're calling yeah. them. I love that label. And actually, it's funny you mentioned Steam. I, I do feel like, you know, a lot of the great stuff from Steam is, is ending up on the Switch. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Overcooked, the first time I played yep. that game was on Steam. Um, and I thought, man, I would love to have this on a Nintendo console. This would make so much sense on a Nintendo console. And lo and behold, it's it's now a very popular Switch game. Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense mm -hmm. on that platform. It's the kind of game that appeals to Nintendo fans. So, Absolutely. Um, and there's another game later on my list that also I played for the first time on Steam. So it's it's really great to see those games that are just inherently Nintendo-y mm -hmm. <laughs> end up on, on a Nintendo platform. Yeah, ab absolutely. And again, you know... Uh, the, uh, there's like small little things about the switch like oh you can slide off the joy cons and have two people play uh yeah. or you and then you have the the kickstand you know as as flimsy as that thing is i'm all every time i kick it open i'm, I'm worried it's gonna snap in half <laughs> but that's yet to be the case so uh just small little things like that nintendo just that's that's their their goal their their priority is to get as many people involved and and playing fun you know as you can so and they're actually doing it for once, which is which <laughs> it just is, feels really good. right. Which is abs absolutely so. Uh, all right, uh, Derek, uh, back to you. So this one is kind of interesting. Um, it's called Night in the Woods. It's for someone like me. I'm I'm, I'm very drawn to art style in games. Uh, that's like the first thing that I see that appeals to me and draws me to a game is the way it looks. Mm -hmm. um, this game has a very cool art style. Um, 
but even beyond that, it, it's got a very cool, it's flat, it's a, it's 2D, it's a platformer, but it's like, it's deeper than that. It, it's kind of a game about dealing with mental illness. Um, I, I don't really know how to describe it. it. It's such a unique game. Have you played Night in the Woods? I've not. Uh, I've not. I'm looking. I'm looking at footage of it of it right now. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like this art style. This kind of uh, what's the? I don't even know what to the word I'm looking for here to describe the, like, to describe the art style. Yeah, it's kind of that style. Like you said, I'm not sure what to call it, but it's like the there's no. Um, it's almost like uh, construction paper. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Snipper clips kind of style. Right. Um, I associate that with like South Park, kind of the way Mm -hmm. the characters aren't necessarily drawn. They don't have like a border. Um, Right. You know, it's very colorful. And almost in in the Night in the Woods context, there's times when you look at it that it it almost looks like um, one of those like leapfrog pad kind of games for little, for like for little kids. It looks very innocent. Um, But below that kind of veneer, is a really kind of affecting narrative um, about mental illness and about fear and about depression. And um, it's, it's a very, I think it's a timely game for the way that we as a culture are finally starting to take that more seriously. Um, You know, it's about stress. It's about all the things that kind of affect us that maybe sometimes we, we traditionally have ignored. This game kind of forces you to confront that and, and deal with it. it it's it's a really interesting game it, it's about stress it's about growing up and kind of how the world changes around you and how it's difficult to deal with that um so if it, if you're looking for a game that's gonna affect you and, and maybe a game that you'll remember for a long time i think night in the woods might be up your alley yeah wow i'm i'm reading uh i'm totally unfamiliar with this game so i'm reading some of the steam reviews uh, right now, this game's also on Steam. Uh, very positive um, reviews, and uh, just this this line right here caught me. This person kind of explaining the story. I don't want to uh, totally give it away, but it says, um, "You decide that college is not working for you, and you just return back to your old hometown. It's been a couple of years since you left. Quite a lot has changed around. People have moved in, and most people have moved out. Uh, and it's just kind of." You you're just kind of thrown into this into this kind of cool situation, and that's uh, that's kind of what you're you're going and, and figuring out, which is unique um, uh, in 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 gaming. That it's it's kind of more focused on uh, seems like you know daily daily life kind of stuff. Yeah, and there's so many times playing it where the character will say something that um, you're just like, oh, I feel that. I've texted that before. I've said that before. Like. You know, you'll be playing and he'll say something like, you know, everything sucks. And why do, why am I not happy? Why am I not enjoying this? You know, he says things. The world is extremely bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. He says things that you're like, oh, this, this guy gets it. You know, so if you're someone who struggles with, you know, stress and, and joy and things like that, especially, this is definitely a game you should look into. Yeah. Uh, st- I'm st- uh, still looking at some of the reviews here. The, the top five reviews on Steam all also mention the soundtrack. So, oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, so uh, cool. Yeah, all right. I will have to. I'm actually gonna have to check that one out because uh, I'm totally unfamiliar with it. But I do. I really do like that art style. Yeah, that kind of construction paper, mm-hmm. um, like kind of storybook. Yeah. Um, art style. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. My next game is uh, Astro Bears Party. I'm not. Are you familiar with this game at all, Derek? Never even heard of this. Okay. Astro Bears Party is easily one of the most fun multiplayer experiences you can have on the Switch. Um, It is also a game that is relatively cheap. Uh, The easiest way to describe it is it is um, it's up to four players. It's basically Snake. Um, You know, like the old uh, Snake back in the the day. Nokia game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Right where you're, you know, trying to collect the points, but you're playing against competitors. So there's uh, four bears, and each bear has like a spacesuit and a jetpack. And there's also this cool kind of techno score vibe going on. And uh, you basically run around a sphere, and as you run, you leave a trail behind you. And the goal is to get your opponents to jump 
or run into your trail um, and you avoid theirs. But where the fun comes in is that you have a jetpack and so each bear has uh, different stats. One bear can turn better, one bear can um, jump better or jump longer, et cetera, et cetera. And so there is actually quite of I mean, I don't want to say quite a bit of depth. There's a little bit of depth uh, in the in in your choice of of bear, um, but by adding that element where you can kind of jump and fly, it, uh, it really just ramps up kind of the difficulty and the fun. And when you're playing with four players, you earn points based upon how long you survive. So every round, it doesn't matter. You know, if you if you go out first or second. You know, if you go out second, you earn a few more points. So it makes every round that much more valuable and that much more important. So if you mess up on a round, you're not out. You can totally come back and totally win. And uh, the worst is that you can also run into your own trail and eliminate yourself. So you have to watch out for that as well. But um, it is just easily a game that... It's also very user friendly. I mean, you have two buttons. You know, oh, you have one button actually. You run and you jump, and you can ho you hold the button to uh to uh, jetpack. But uh, I mean, I've played this game with my dad, who's like never played video games before, and I mean, he you know you can pick this game up in literally like a couple of minutes. And uh, say, just, I, I'm looking at screenshots of it, and this is one of those games where as soon as I see it. I already know right. how it plays. It's very, very simple and straightforward looking. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's it is totally a game that um, you know you watch. Maybe you might be watch gameplay footage ever like okay, this looks cool. But once you sit down and play it with with some people, or especially with four people, uh, it works flawlessly. I played it with a group of uh, group of friends, and we used. I have the. GameCube adapter and so for the Wii U which you can actually use on your switch and we used uh, GameCube controllers because fortunately the switch can uh, supports tons of controller options and so we used uh, GameCube controllers and uh, and played and we played to like a, a round of a hundred and we just had so much fun <laughs> so much fun playing it and uh, the winner was actually my uh, my friend's girlfriend um, Emily who like you know never plays video games but she she, mm -hmm. she totally won yeah so it's great those are the best kind of games the games that you can play with like casual gamers who who've never picked up a game that are so simple that everyone can get involved with it. Those are the mm. most fun games to play. Oh, absolutely. And uh, looking at this game, it's like I see a little Mario Galaxy because it's like mm -hmm. your the game takes place on like a round sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Snake obviously because it's like they're right. leaving these trails. Um, but I love the idea that you jump over them. Yeah. That's so cool. Like if you could jump in Snake, that's what this game is. And mm -hmm. what's really neat is I can see as you would play this, the ball, the sphere would get more and more packed with trails. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So you're just jumping like crazy, I'm assuming. And it, mm -hmm. it almost looks like a yarn ball that you would get for your cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's just this colorful ball of of trails that look like yarn. It, this looks really cool. Yeah. And there's uh, the... There's you know obviously not a lot of depth in this game, um, but uh, there are, there are three different spheres you can play on. There's like small, medium, large, um, and the game also I will say it has you know it has like two songs in the soundtrack. But fortunately, the one kind of techno uh, beat song that's in it is just so catchy. You are just going to be you know even even pl we played for like half an hour. You know, song never got old. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's just it is just it is cheap i think it's like three dollars on eShop. it's another one of these games just kind of pick up play um even works well in handheld mode i've played it you know on the kickstand oh, using, nice. using joy cons and it, it, tons of fun that way as well i would say this looks like primarily a multiplayer game absolutely yeah there is a single player kind of mode but it's more of like a training exercise really so um yeah, yeah but tons of fun so yeah, yeah it looks awesome cool all right uh I'll toss it back over to you so the next game is a game that I played for the first time on Steam. Um, and I thought, as soon as I played it, I thought this is, this is the perfect game for a Nintendo system. I, I would give anything to have this on a Nintendo system. And this was during the Wii U kind of era um, when there wasn't a lot on the Nintendo system. But now that we have a, a system people actually like, this game has made its way to the Nintendo platform, and I couldn't be more happy. 
Uh, it's called Towerfall. Have you ever played Towerfall? I did play Towerfall. I was a um, I backed on Kickstarter the Ouya, and mm. uh, it was that was like it came out I think on Ouya, and so I I, pl- I played it back then. <laughs> this game is so cool. It, yeah. It's so awesome. So if you've never played Towerfall, think Smash Brothers, but two D. Um, think Smash Brothers on the Super Nintendo, but but the but <laughs> it's so strange. But your only weapons are like bows and arrows. Mm-hmm. So you're basically it's like a 2D kind of platforming stage. You know, it has that feel. Uh, but the idea is to just kill everyone else, and you do that with your bow and arrow. And you can also jump on top of their heads in very old school Nintendo fashion but uh, that's really all there is to it mm-hmm. and it is so insanely fun and addictive um, and I feel like it's not quite one of the things that I don't like about Smash is I'm not like a super hardcore memorize the frame right. get the move sets down kind of guy wave dashing so Smash, the, yeah. right like you play Smash with someone who knows Smash and it's not that much fun because they just wreck you mm-hmm but I feel like this game is more along the the Astro Bears kind of wavelength, right. where it kind of levels the playing field. You don't you don't need to be a hardcore gamer to love this game, and even if you are, there's not like there's not a lot of kind of room for advantage. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It, it feels a little more Mario Kart than it does Smash Brothers, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, so yeah, and in any case, it's gorgeous. It has like a very, uh, 16 bit kind of look. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I can't say enough about Towerfall and I'm so happy to see it's, uh, come to a Nintendo system. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it just kind of goes back to this, this thing. And I think it's just it, why it works so well on Nintendo is Nintendo has always just been something where you take this very, very simple formula and you just give it to four people and let them have fun at the same time. And it works really well. Obviously, this isn't, this isn't a Nintendo game, but that's why it just fits so well with Nintendo. Um, but there's still, even with Towerfall, there's still definitely a competitive crowd. There's still a um, complexity to it that uh, you can learn and, and understand and be really good at it. But, uh, you know, it is one of those games where you don't need to know that complexity just to have a great time. Yeah, it's so much fun. Oh my god, I love Towerfall so much. And you know, the other thing too, you mentioned how it feels like a Nintendo game. The great thing about the Switch, and the thing that I think made so much sense about it from a Nintendo perspective, is that Nintendo is really the only company, the only platform maker, that is still taking local multiplayer seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Switch is like the perfect local multiplayer system. The perfect couch co-op, the perfect offline pizza party, get people in a room and have fun with video games. And and to me, that's when video games are the most fun. And um, a game like Towerfall, a game like Astro Bears, a game like Fast RMX, these are games that you can play in a room with people and just have an absolute blast passing the controller around. Um, Overcooked, another great mm-hmm. example. So. Yeah, I mean, the Switch is just perfect for that kind of game, that kind of gameplay, and Towerfall is arguably the perfect example of that kind of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm realizing now. Wow, we're talking a lot, of, a lot of multiplayer games, and it's interesting thinking about that with the Switch. But right, just, well, yeah. I mean, it's the Switch is so conducive to that that it just, it, and I'm glad that developers are seeing it and putting their their great multiplayer games on it because it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, my next game is uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. So Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is the kind of prequel um, to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is coming out uh, next year, I, I imagine. Um, it is made by you know the original um, kind of developer of Castlevania. They kickstarted Bloodstained. Uh, ritual of the Night, and then they made this kind of version as the prequel and. Ritual of the Night is going to be, you know, more like not 3D, that kind of 2.5D um, style, and but this is a full kind of throwback, think Shovel Knight, but Castlevania um, 
game. I was going to say, this, this game looks exactly like, even the, the logo, mm-hmm. it just looks like an NES Castlevania game. Yeah, if you loved, um, you know, if you loved Castlevania 3, this is the game for you. Um, I really, like, I really love Shovel Knight a lot. Um, I think it's great because, you know, a lot of, a lot of these games, games now when you think indie developers i would not almost call this an indie developed game um i guess it kind of is um but you know they use these eight bit graphics but it kind of just it's like it just looks kind of pixelated to me whereas this looks like this could run on the nes and Mm -hmm. that's what i've always loved about shovel knight and so as soon as this game came out um i got it I had, a, I had a friend kind of show it to me, and um, I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. I, I downloaded it. It is also another game that is really short, but um, there's a bunch of different options to play. Uh, you have your main character, and you. the cool thing about it is, unlike Castlevania 3, as you progress, you kind of pick up the other characters. You can switch back and forth between them, but in this, you can choose not to pick up these other characters, and your main character kind of gets some other powers. Um, and so you can play through it different ways. Um, and there's different, there's a lot of secrets in this game for how short it is. It's also relatively cheap. I think it's like $10. Um, but it is totally, you know, the Castlevania game, an old throwback Castlevania game that we, you know, fans have wanted forever. Um, obviously great chipped tune soundtrack. It obviously looks gorgeous given, um, given its art style, but, um, I don't know if you're if you're a Castlevania fan uh, on the, and the NES or at all. You, this is a must, I would say. Again, another game that while it is on other systems, just works on the Switch because now you have it on the go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, and actually, uh, what's interesting is this is the second game on our list from this developer. This is the same developer that did um, Mighty Gunvolt Burst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and so they they do retro authentically like mm-hmm. like you said this doesn't look like this doesn't look like a modern game trying to be retro this looks like if you showed me a screen from this game and told me it was from an unreleased castlevania nes game i i would have no reason to doubt you it, mm-hmm. it looks like an nes game like yeah. authentically genuinely yeah and i i, I love that we're I love that people are 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 going back to that especially we're seeing this a lot with 16-bit games now um, it, you know, not just, oh, let's do pixelated old school graphics, but actually making it look like it would have ran on those systems. Like Sonic Mania for me, like I adore Sonic Mania because it was Sonic just works best in 2D. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think, I think we've, you know, I'll, I'll come, I'll come to realize that. I mean, you know, had a couple okay games in 3D, but, um, just, Hey, no, let's make it look like it would have ran on the Genesis. And I think it works well. And that's the same thing here. It's just, it's the Castlevania version of that game. So I was going to say it's, it's most of the games on our lists here right. have <laughs> pixelated old school retro graphics. And it, it's so cool because for a while, if you're a long time, if you're a long time gamer, it felt like this was passe. This was the, as soon as the 64 and the PlayStation came out, 3d was it. Yep. And it felt like it wasn't a graphics option to do your game in 3D. It felt like it was mandatory. And if you did it, 2D was reserved for the handhelds. 2D mm-hmm. was for Game Boy. 2D was for Game Gear. If you wanted to do a console game, it had to be 3D. Mm-hmm. And it just that that was like the only thing there was. And so slowly over the decades, that's kind of chiseled away to the point where we are now, where it's not at all like that. You can do a 2D pixelated game that it released retail mm. physically on a on your plat on a platform with the Switch. And I'm so happy about that because if you go back and play a lot of the early 3D games, and not even the early 3D games, but I would argue there are a lot of games in the GameCube that fall under this in the that sort of generation that fall under this sort of umbrella too. Mm-hmm. They they really have aged poorly. Mm-hmm. 3D games, I think, you know, polygonal character models age really poorly and one system that i i would argue hasn't aged is the super nintendo 16 bit graphics forever look vibrant and colorful and great um super uh, Super mario super mario yeah super mario world uh uh, link to the past i mean still mm -hmm. look amazing super metroid those games 
Super Mario World looks a hundred times better than Super Mario sixty four. A hundred times, and absolutely. If, in nineteen ninety six, no one would have said that. But now, if you put those two side by side, if <laughs> you know, so it, it, to me, it's just it's really nice to see two D sort of old school game design back at the forefront, and not just as an option, but as a viable sort of route um, mm-hmm. to in terms of art style. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I have one more game in the style. We'll get to it. But uh, yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Back back to you. So my uh, my last game, speaking of 2D, speaking of pixels, is a game that um, I, I have on my list. But full disclosure, I have not played it yet. OK, it's on my list because of the amazing things I've heard about it. Um. It's on my list because I, I have it and I just I've yet to start it, but I'm very excited to. It's on my list because I, I had a friend tell me straight face that this is the best game on the Switch. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, you mean for the E sh-? he said, No. This is the best game. It's better than Breath of the Wild. It's better than Mario Odyssey. He he preferred this game to even those. And he was dead serious. And he was like a serious gamer. Um, he told me there's just something about this game, and I've heard that from everyone who's played it. It's called Celeste. Have you played Celeste? Uh, I've not. I've I've not played Celeste, but I will say that's there's clearly a reason why it is um, <laughs> up for like Game of the Year award compared, you know, yeah. stat this year. So it's incredible. This game has made such an impact, um, and it feels like I do believe it's available on other platforms, mm-hmm. but. Um, and maybe it's not. I'm not sure. I think it is. Um, but either way, it feels like the Switch version is the one, as we've said before. I know it's on Steam as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's. I want to say it started on Switch. Maybe it was. Maybe it was started on Switch and Steam, and then went to other platforms. And then went to other. So at, at least on the console side, it was originally a Switch game. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game is just. I mean, I've seen it. It's gorgeous. It has a kind of. You know how, like, in the spring, when they do a lot of the pastel colors mm-hmm. that are really bright, and it's a lot of pinks and yellows and oranges right. that are very complementary. Easter colors, I like to call them. Easter colors, but not obnoxious. Right, yeah. Um, Celeste kind of has that kind of palette. Um, the game is is stunning to look at. Um, at. Like a lot of the games we've talked about, it looks like a Super Nintendo game that just, you know, after 20 years is finally being re-released or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks gorgeous. It's a 2D platformer. Um, and it is a game that, I mean, if you go to Metacritic and look at, like, the top Switch games based on aggregate review scores, it's like Breath of the Wild, Mario, Odyssey, Celeste. Mm-hmm. Like, this, this game is, like, in that in that kind of caliber. Uh, um, yeah, based I, be- on- I, believe, uh, I believe IGN gave it a 10 out of 10 when it came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they don't hand those out terribly often, even no. now. I can. So this this is a game that I'm I'm very excited to start. Um, I'm confident, given what I know about it, and given how it looks, and given the feedback that it's gotten, this looks like a really special game. So if anyone's played it, let us know. Um, I'm very excited to give it a try. It looks like it could very well be one of the top Switch games, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it was made by the developers of Towerfall. See, this makes sense. Yep, <laughs> they're so good. I want to meet. I want to meet these people and hug them, and love them forever, and maybe get some pizza or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can play with my cats. It doesn't like the the point is they deserve it. They deserve pizza. They deserve to play with my cats because this is a talented group of people, and I hope they're still doing Switch game. I assume they are. Um, you know, doing Towerfall and then doing Celeste. I, I hope to see more of them on the Switch. Yeah, and there's something about the story I remember. Um, like, there's something pretty cool about the story, but I can't remember what it is. I want to say, hmm. yeah, I can't. I feel like I've heard that too. I know that I, I've heard the soundtrack is 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 amazing, um, and I know it's 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 one of those um, sort of deliberately hard platformers, sort of the the platformers that take pride in being very difficult very challenging i don't know that it's probably at that meat boy level like it doesn't right. look like bang your head against the wall difficult but um it, it's it's it, it's more like an adventure 
type platformer um, from from the looks of it. And and so it's not just like isolated levels. Oh, here's an obstacle course for you to hate yourself playing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a genuine sort of adventure that has real challenge to it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm reading some of, the, some of the stuff here. It says, once you hit the credits, the gloves come off. The game's eight worlds <laughs> are paired with eight B-sides. So you have to then, so it's kind of, so it kind of like, uh, you know, Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts, right? Once you beat it, you kind of got to go back and, and replay it. You get the, you get the master quest. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. But yeah, this game, and I've been very guilty lately because here's the thing. I don't have a couch yet. I just moved into a new apartment. Right. <laughs> I, don't my, I don't have my new couch yet. And so that's really that's really put a damper on my gaming mm-hmm. because I like I, you, you gotta have a couch. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, I, I'm not gonna sit on the floor. This isn't uh, this isn't the 1800s when they sat on the floor when they played their video games. This is this is the 90s, right? It's yeah. the 90s. You need a couch. Well, I think it's the 90s based upon the uh, graphic styles of games we're, we're looking at. <laughs> so, yeah. We're not savages. We need couches. <laughs> yeah, and we need pixelated 90s games. Yeah, and maybe some Gushers and uh, Capri Sun, you know, and then we're, we're good to go. Do you remember Pizzeria's? Uh, they were a little, they were a little snack uh, cracker, like a not a cracker, but a chip, kind of like a Dorito. And they were in the night; they were released in the nineties by Keebler, I think. But they tasted like pizza, and they were so good. And someone recently reminded me of Pizzeria's. So if you, could, if yes. anyone has a bag, once I like once linked, once I saw the bag, I I, I saw it, yeah. The logo, like as soon as mm-hmm. you see it, you're like, oh my god, I remember. They were so good. Yeah, it reminds me of like, yeah, it kind of looks like the Combos logo. Yes, only unlike Combos, which were an unholy abomination. <laughs> um, I'm anti. I don't like Combos at all. The pizzerias, I would give anything for them to bring that back. If I had pizzerias, like a Crystal Pepsi, <laughs> and I had like, you know, Ren and Stimpy playing, and I was playing Celeste. While all this was going on, that would be it. That would yeah. that would be like '90s Derek. Well, you know, um, what was it um, when? So Amazon partnered with Coca Cola, I think, who owns it, to bring back Surge, right? Like you can buy Surge on Amazon. Um, and uh, if you remember Surge back in the day, that awesome '90s soda. And when Smash Brothers came out, Smash Brothers Wii U, I bought like I ordered, you know, order. It cost me like twenty bucks. <laughs> to get like 12 sodas right and so i ordered <laughs> i ordered like a case of surge smash brothers and i was in i was back in college at the day at the time and so i was like well i'm skipping class today and so you know like <laughs> so so i had you know i had i had surge and uh and smash brothers it was awesome it was like reliving my childhood that's perfect that's perfect yeah so yeah, that that's like- my that's my plan that's my plan for well when the next one comes out so here's a quick story about about my original experience with smash when that game came out for the 64, so imagine a world where Smash doesn't exist. No one has any idea what it is. It's this new thing. It looks weird, whatever, but no, there's no... I mean, Smash now has this huge lore, this huge following, mm-hmm. but this is a world where none of that exists. A friend of mine bought it. He and I were incidentally just about to take a week-long vacation to the beach. We're on our way to the beach, and he's like, you know, I just bought this game. I'm going to bring my 64 just in case it might rain a day or two down there. We'll have something to do. It's like, okay, cool. So we get down there and the first day it did rain. So he was like, well, let's, let's get out the 64 and play this new game. Smash brothers. It was so, it was a revelation. It was, we did not stop playing it all day. And in fact, we didn't make it to the beach the entire week. (laughs) Now that that's how good Smash Brothers was when you first played. Like, girls, beach, sun, sands. Eh, I'm gonna play Smash Brothers. That that was the power that that game had when it first came out. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it, it was just another great lineup in the N64. You know, it was like, do we want to play Goldeneye? Do we want to play Smash? I don't know. Oh. Or do we want, you know, multiplayer? My God, you know, do we want to play, uh, you know, WCW, NW, Mario Revenge, Kart. or Mario Kart, or? Oh, those were the days. No, but those days are back. Now we have another great local multi. Like the day, those days are back. We've got pixelated graphics again. Everything's cyclical. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, mm-hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to eBay search here, pizzeria chips to see, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you can find, find someone. I've been searching for, um. 
somebody who still has checks quest you know like in the box like the box oh, of yeah. checks but i I've, I've been searching for years and unfortunately haven't find it but i'm sure i will i'm sure somebody somebody's got it out there so i'll just i just gotta find it and the great thing about processed food is it's probably still good to eat the oh. pizzerias oh yeah like sure <laughs> fine and i yeah. would eat them i don't care yeah. they were that good yeah i'm sure they're i'm sure yeah. they're, i'm sure they're totally fine they're fine yeah um okay well i guess uh i go last here um this is now a, that we talk about the pizzerias. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, all right, here is another game that um, is uh, e on the Nintendo eShop. Um, this game is also getting tons of love right now. It is also a kind of NES throwback style game, and that is The Messenger. Um, yeah, basically, um, it's a new Ninja Gaiden. If you haven't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I remember seeing this. This was it was on Nintendo's kind of uh, Nindies title, um, and well, I guess it's not really Nindies. It's published by Devolver uh, Devolver Digital, so kind of a, a bigger uh, publisher, but uh, developed by a, a company called Sabotage. But uh, yeah, the easiest way to describe this is if you like Shovel Knight and you like those old NES games and you like Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, uh, which is the uh, Castlevania, well, now you have Ninja Gaiden, and that is The Messenger. Um, this game is, I will say that um, unlike Ninja Gaiden, where Ninja Gaiden is just brutally hard, this game has, a, I think, a pretty fair difficulty curve, and that it kind of, I think it does a great job of teaching you uh, along the way of how of how to kind of progress to the next level. So you never, you never feel like you're unequipped um, to face the next task or the next kind of, you know, platforming, um, puzzle. Um, there's also like, uh, shops so you can upgrade your equipment and stuff as you want. So I think that also helps with the difficulty curve. But again, this is another game. This one is a little, I'd say, I'd say it's kind of more 16 bit, um, than really than eight bit. Um, but again, it's just another game with a, that graphics, that old school graphic style, which just looks great. Like it definitely looks like it could have run on um, the Super Nintendo for sure. Some yeah. levels, the some yeah, levels maybe, game. yeah, some levels, yeah, the NES a little bit more, more Super Nintendo Genesis era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's it's a ton of fun. Um, obviously, another great great soundtrack. And again, this just seems to be what Derek and I like. We like these old school kind of throwback games. It's gorgeous. My God, it's absolutely gorgeous looking. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gonna have to, these are these are games. I'm I'm gonna end up with all of these games now yeah. after the show. Like these look tremendous. Yeah, I I've 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 played I put a ton of time into this, and uh, I think they just added a new game plus mode. So now once you beat it, you can go back with all your all your cool stuff. Isn't that cool to see like old school games like this, but in this new school context where they can add content to it and mm -hmm. you know, issue updates and things like that. It's so cool. And it, it makes me kind of like, I think back to the super Nintendo. Can you imagine the, like the, the, the new content that would have been released for like super Mario world oh or my God, yeah. the past? like, you know, it, it makes you think like, man, and I, that's actually an idea. I wonder if Nintendo, I mean, I know they're they're kind of taking a different route with their retro games now on the Switch, but mm -hmm. it'd be really cool if you could buy kind of a, a newer version of Mario World where they did add new content to it or something. Like, yeah, I mean, we'll see, you know. Um, now they're doing that, the NES Online, right? And, you know, they've done a couple special versions of games. So the first, so the first wave was, like, what was it? I think it was Legend of Zelda, Dr. Mario, Mario Brothers. Um, mm -hmm. and then the second month we got, they did a, a special version of the legend of Zelda, which is the, just the legend of Zelda, but you start off with all the stuff. So it's mm -hmm. in a way kind of a new game plus of Zelda, which is cool. Yeah. I would love to see them do more of that kind of stuff. Tweaking. So one of my favorite things about, there was a game on the Wii U. I'm sure everyone's played called NES remix. Yeah. Um, one of the coolest things about that game was, seeing those old games in a new context and seeing new kind of gameplay elements introduced to these games that, you know, by heart, it mm -hmm. kind of shakes them up and makes them different. I'd love to see that, you know, yeah. with, with these old games and it, and they could do it. Yeah. I don't think it would be that big of a, you know, right. NES, I, don't, I don't think it's that unrealistic of an expectation. Yeah. NES remix two has the, um, 
Luigi, Super Mario Luigi version, right? Right mm-hmm. where you play uh, right to left as opposed to left to right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so something like, so something like that, like even even something like that, I think is is a totally cool and kind of fun way to do it. I'm I was shocked actually that Nintendo did not do an SNES remix. I totally thought that was the next obvious obvious step. Yeah, that's a very good point. I'd love to see that. Like I, I'd love to see the original Zelda on the on the Switch now that you can play it on their service. It'd be so cool if like you could you could add like pixelated 8-bit Midna mm-hmm. to the game. Like, and now you're Wolf Link in the original Zelda. Like, something like that would be so cool. I think people would freak out. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah, that, I mean, NES Remix had a, had a lot of that kind of stuff. Hey, you get these kind of cool challenges and uh, and stuff like that. And people love that stuff. I mean, you know, oh, people yeah. people love Nintendo's retro, retro stuff. Um uh, I don't know if I'm surprised or not surprised that there that there's no uh, N64 uh, classic. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still I'm still going back and back and forth on that, but uh, yeah, that's a tricky one. Yeah, I think it. What games do you put on it? And obviously, in the controller, the N64 controller, that uh, that would, I don't think I think getting that at, a, at around a hundred dollar price point would be kind of tricky with that N64. Yeah, Controllers an issue. the 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 games would need a big overhaul visually. Mm-hmm. They'd really have to clean those up, and ugh, that that would take a lot. That would take a lot. And and honestly, I don't know. I don't need to, to rag on the sixty four because it had some of the best games ever. But it's like those. That's was all it had. It had mm-hmm. a handful of the best games ever. The the roster wasn't very deep. So I I couldn't think of twenty classic n64 games i can think of five that are the like five of the best games ever made right but beyond that there's not much depth on the bench does it does that make sense oh absolutely well in some of those games there's like you know gonna be licensing issues right like Mm -hmm. like how could how could you possibly have an n64 classic without goldeneye without banjo kazooie right and could you get could you pull off the licensing with those games Mm -hmm. is you know i mean you just yeah perfect dark absolutely i mean and, and to me an, an n64 classic has to have you know has has to have golden eye i would and then the no. game, you're right and, it would it would be fraudulent if it didn't right. yeah like and then conquer conquer's bad fur day that's another yeah. you know is that is basically that, everything that rare did should be on that. right yeah i mean you could definitely you know obviously donkey kong 64 would be there uh i think rare also did diddy kong racing so you so you could have that right mm-hmm. um so it'd, it'd it'd be it'd be tough, and as you said, a lot of those games don't hold up well. Nope, um, they really. And, and, and if you're being honest, because I know I have nostalgic att- attachment to them as well. But if you're being honest with yourself, you know, even Mario Kart 64 is it's it hasn't aged very well. There's mm-hmm. some. It's just that that early 3D stuff has not aged well, not only visually but in terms of the gameplay. Right. Well, you know, they, they, what, uh, there's there's DS and 3DS remakes of, of a handful of those games you know you have the um, super mario 64 which is on the which is on the ds uh, and even even ocarina of time which you know some people consider the greatest game ever made the 3ds version of that like still doesn't look that great mm-hmm. you know oh i thought of another game that would have to be on it though What's, uh... star star fox 64 Star Fox 64 would have to be on it, yeah. And there have to be. And there's a 3DS remake of that already, so... Yeah, so it's funny how they're remaking all these N64 games. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah, because... <laughs> it's yeah. almost like they don't look or play very well. Yeah, yeah, ex- ex- exactly, so... <laughs> yeah. That's like Nintendo's subtle way of going, Ew. Ew. oh boy. Yeah. And that's probably why you're not going to see an N64 classic. No, I think we we'd be much more likely to see a Game Boy classic... That would be cool. Or, or like a Game Boy Color, right? And then it has some Game Boy games on it. I think that would be, that would be kind of cool. That maybe that's something they could develop, um, and that'd be super easy. I mean, those games, you know, don't need any polishing at all, pretty much. So, yeah. And and you know, neither does the messenger. Yeah, neither does the messenger. <laughs> yeah. So we end up on these tangents. But I know yeah. it's great. It's great. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, uh, I'm trying to think of any other honorable mentions, um, maybe that we have. Um, I think, um, 
There's a bunch hmm. of there's definitely a bunch of games that are on the Nintendo eShop that are also on a bunch of other systems or have come out physically. Um, you know, maybe through like limited run or something like that. Um, you know, like I'm just trying to run up my head. Like Stardew Valley is obviously a great game. It is on the Nintendo eShop. Uh, I recommend Stardew Valley to everyone because uh, it's an amazing, amazing game and will suck your life away. Uh, <laughs> um, I think Ikaruga is on the Nintendo eShop. Yes, Ikaruga. If you've never played the GameCube shoot 'em up classic Ikaruga, that's on there. Yeah, it is one of the most brutally difficult games you could ever possibly play. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if if you hate yourself, <laughs> you yeah. can play Ikaruga. Yeah, you yeah you can play Ikaruga. Um, uh, Oceanhorn, I think, uh, is a is a game that's on there. If you kind of like um, Wind Waker, that's an okay that's an okay Ooh. game. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's uh, don't don't go into it expecting Wind Waker, but uh, <laughs> go into it thinking, oh, if I wanted to play something kind of like Wind Waker, it is. Clearly not as nowhere close to being as good as Wind Waker, but I mean it's it's okay if you can get it at a, uh, uh, on a sale or something like that. Um, there's a game called One Strike, which was made by the people who make Astro Bears Party. It's a 2D um, fighting game, kind of like Bushido Blade. If you remember Bushido Blade back on the PS1, where it was kind of like one hit or two hits kills you, uh, but in this game, one hit uh, is is just a one hit kill. Um, so it's kind of fun. It's also another game that's a dirt cheap, so kind of cool there. Another good one is Owl Boy. Oh. Owl Boy. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a, like a 2D. It's another retro styled kind of platformer. Um, but yeah, you play as an Owl Boy. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Owl Boy is ab yeah, ab absolutely gorgeous. Now I've got did that physical release though? I think it did. It may. It, it may have. It may have. Um, well, a lot of to be a lot of Switch games are getting physical releases as well now. A lot of which these makes kind me of so happy because I'm yeah, a I physical too. guy. I, I am too, absolutely. That makes me very happy. Uh, yeah, I'm looking. Oh, you know, it. you know what hasn't gotten a physical release that's on the the Switch eShop is Resident Evil Revelations Two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if you've never played Revelations One, it's a, it's like it's a it was originally for the 3DS. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good Resident Evil 4 styled Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, you know, it's it's more of the horror than kind of the newer ones where it's just like Rambo with zombies. Right. Um, although I've heard 7 is kind of back to that old school feel a little bit. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't played it. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played I haven't played 7 either. It's uh, it is it's first person, though. And I know that actually there was a there's a VR versions of it as well, um, of which I'm out on so uh like I'm, I'm i'm quite good on that uh outlast is on is on the eShop. um again i'm yeah i'm not super into those uh like terrifying games uh no i don't i don't like to be scared nope yeah so so i yeah i i kind of avoid that but yeah resident evil revelations 2 and revelations 1 i think yeah one there's a physical version right and then two is like you have yeah. to do the download is how it works yeah so what's really what really sucks is that they released the resident evil revelations collection on the switch which is both of the games mm -hmm. but only the first one's physical the the box comes with a download code for the second game which is super lame i that drives me cra i would buy that if it if it weren't right if it like that um but because I have Revelations on my Wii on my Wii U, um, I do too. Yeah, and it, you know it plays great on there, and I, I enjoyed it. So I'd love to get Revelation Revelations two on my Switch, but <sighs> downloading it's just da like well, especially downloading huge games because uh, right I I don't like downloading massive games like Revelations that should be physical. Right, and they're going to eat up. You know, you only have so much space on your Switch. I have a. What, I have a like 128 gig, I think, uh, mm -hmm. micro SD card in mine. But you know, you've really got to put a lot of storage in um, to your mm -hmm. Switch if you want to play those bigger games. Like I think you you had mentioned last time that you had you have Doom, and uh, is I think the Doom multiplayer is download only, but the single player is on the physical cartridge. I want to say is I think how it works. Something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Storage. Oh, you know you know, another uh, good eShop game that I, I would have put on my list, but it did get a physical release, so I left it off. Axiom Verge. Oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a Metroid 
game that isn't Metroid, mm -hmm. but it's very cool. Um, so if, yeah, if you're a Metroid fan or even a Castlevania fan, sort of the Metroidvania thing, mm -hmm. Axiom Verge is tremendous. And you can get it digitally on the eShop, but there's a physical release that's kind of like the, the deluxe version. Um, so you can get phys physically on your Switch as well. Yeah. Cool. So cool. shout out to those games as well. Yeah. So now we've given you... Um... I think now we've given you DuckTales with um, Shovel Knight, and we've mm. given you uh, Castlevania with Bloodstained, Ritual of the Moon. We've given you Ninja Gaiden, and now we've given you Metroid. So yeah, Sonic hey, Smash Brothers that's Son pixelated. Yeah, Smash <laughs> Brothers is pixelated. Sonic Mania is back to that style. So every game that you played as a kid, you can pretty much find on the Switch <laughs> in like kind of a different in a different way. That's so great, though. It's, it's so awesome. awesome. It's 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 so great. So because they're not, they are putting their own spin on these things. Oh, they are they're, absolutely. They're, they're not just the, the really good ones are not just you know ripoffs. Mm -hmm. What we need now, and this will bring it. This will bring it full circle here. What we need now is a sixteen-bit pixelated F zero game. Oh gosh. See, we already since since we already have. Fast, you know, fast RMX. Now we just now yep. we now yep. we yep. Somebody make it. I guarantee it'll 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 blow up. It'll it'll oh, happen. it'll definitely happen. Yeah. So cool. All right. Well, uh, that's kind of our our eShop recommendations. Derek, where can people find you on the internet? Um, I'm on I'm on this <clears throat> this little website um, that's kind of up and coming called Twitter. What's that? What is it's, what is a Twitter it's a thing? You know, it's a thing. You go on there and and you 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 you, you write your thoughts, um, which sounds really dumb um, because most of the people have dumb thoughts. It turns out, mm -hmm. um, and that's why they're limited in characters. You only allowed like I, I don't know how many characters. They recently changed it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's this little mm -hmm. up and coming thing. I'm I'm at Death by Derek on there, D E R E K. So you can follow me there and my various um, projects and things. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. Well, you can find me any on the internet anywhere at Super Games Bros, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, I also do consistency. Consistency. It's true. I yeah. I also do a Game of Thrones podcast called Bend of the Knee. Um, and uh, yeah, find me right here on Box Trick. So all right, guys. As always, thanks for listening.